Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be doing a problem from the Bosnian and Herzegovina IMO Team Selection Test 2011 problem number one. I suggest you try this nice geometry problem out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 40 to an hour, not more than an hour and a half. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next 20 minutes, draw a diagram, put your first ideas out on paper. Now let's begin. So what do we see? We see a geometry problem with BC is equal to half of AC plus AB, okay, interesting. Let M and M be the midpoints of AB and AC, that the in-circle of ABC lies on the circumcircle of the triangle AMN. Okay, so there are a couple of ways we can go about doing this. One way is to say, well, what is it that we then need to prove? We need to prove, let's actually draw this thing, A, B, C. Let's assume the condition holds true, like this condition holds true. So. M, N, and we have BAM, we have I, the in center. So we need to show that this lies on the circumcircle around this triangle. So for me, there are a couple of ways to go about doing this. One way is to say, well, let's look at a problem backwards. What would we have? If this was alpha half, alpha half, I mean, this is alpha, alpha, alpha half. If this was, this is beta and gamma because it's, these are the points. If I was here, we would have this angle would be gamma, this angle would be beta, and this one would be alpha half and alpha half. In other words, we would have IM is equal to IN. Okay. And is that enough for us to prove? Is that a thing that's a good enough for us to prove? And the answer is, pause for twins. Yes, because we have that lemma of the side of the angle bisector and the side bisector meet on the circumcircle. And that's exactly what would happen here. The only sort of thing is like, what if AM is AN, but then AB is AC, and then from here that is equal to BC, and then I is the same as O, which means that B I N, which means I N A I M A are 90. So then I would also be on the circumcircle. So that's one way of going about it, try to prove I M is I N. Another way is saying like, wait a second, what is on this circumcircle? Like that is the circumcircle of what? How can I redefine it? And the answer is, well, I can also redefine it by stating that is the circumcircle with diameter a o, with diameter a o, right? Because o n is ninety, o m is ninety, and we just need to prove that a i o is also equal to ninety. Okay, and then we can forget about m and n, and the problem really is we have this, we have i o prove that the angle AIO is 90 degrees, right? That's a totally legit way to go about trying to prove this problem. Prove that AIO is 90, and then what does this mean for a triangle? So there's two, so these are like two separate ways that we can go about proving the problem. I first thought of this one, then this one, so let's try this one first. How would I do this one? I would do this one, well, I'll try trigonometry here. I can calculate AI, I can't calculate IO. So here's what I do. I would extend I, AI to this intersection, call this intersection B. Why? What does it mean that OI is perpendicular to AP? Well, that means that I is the midpoint of AP. I can calculate AI using the elements of the triangle, and I can calculate IP also using the elements of the triangle. I have IP is going to equal to PC because when I get all the angles, this is beta, this is gamma half, this is alpha half. So I'll have IP is PC, and that is sine of alpha half times two times R by the sine theorem on the triangle ABC. 
And that is what PI is equal to. So now I'm actually curious. Actually, I need to prove that this is 90. Now I'm thinking whether or not it's enough to prove something else, but it doesn't matter. Let's see. Let's see what we get immediately. How do we get AI? Well, when we put perpendiculars, this is S minus A, where S is A plus B plus C over two. And then we can get that AI is equal to, so this is alpha half. And then AI is equal to the cosine of alpha half times S minus A. Now S minus A is A plus B plus C minus over two. And A is equal to, like two A is equal to B plus C. So S is equal to three A over two. In other words, I have S minus A is equal to A over two. So AI is cosine of alpha times A over two. And now AI is going to equal IP if and only if cosine of, actually wait a second, cosine of alpha half has is equal to this over this. So actually cosine of alpha half. Oh no, so it is <laughs> my bad. It's always good to check these things. So cosine of alpha half is equal to this over AI. So from there, cosine of A over two over AI is equal to cosine of alpha half, which means that AI is equal to A over two cosine of alpha half. So, and it's important to like have these pauses every once in a while, check that you know that you're doing the trigonometry correctly. So we have now AI is equal to IP if and only if two cosine of alpha, A over two cosine of alpha half is equal to sine of alpha half times two R. In other words, this is true if and only if A over two sine of alpha half cosine of alpha half is equal to two R. And for me, this is now something I've seen before. I need, what is 2R? Can I get rid of 2R Im immediately? And the answer is I can, and I can just have A. Because what is A? A is equal to A over sine of alpha is equal to 2R. I know that by the sine theorem on the triangle ABC. That's what's like useful in trigonometry. So like know all these like lengths, like what they're equal to, and then mess around with them. So we need to have this be true. And this is true if and only if, because this is equal to now. Two sine x cosine x is equal to what? Sine of two x, where x equal alpha half. So we have this is a over sine of alpha equal to two r. This is true, and ergo this is true, this is true. And then a i is equal to i p. And then OIA is 90 degrees. Notice this is a way to prove that this is a 90 degree angle, right? When you have O something A is 90, this is a good way to go about proving that, right? Proving that that thing is the midpoint. Now this way, which I like more because it's going to be more synthetic. Now from here, let's also, we can say if B is equal to C, we're done. And also we would have to do that in this proof as well, because O and I are the same points, if not, and we would just need to handle that case as well. So let's go about doing with, with this case. I, M, and I, N need to be equal. So we have AI, and let's assume, so this is B, C, let's assume B is greater than C, right? If they're equal to, then they're both equal to A. And this is B plus C over two uh, is equal to A, whatever. So we have I, and now we need to prove I M and I N are the same. So how are we going to actually, these are not the midpoints, the midpoints are somewhere like here. I M, 
So how do we go about proving this? And the answer is, well, what is something that we can use about i? And the answer is, well, we can use the fact that i is the on the angle bisector, which means when we put down these two perpendiculars, we are going to get s minus a and s minus a on both sides. In other words, we're going to get a minus a over 2 on both sides. Now let me get a better diagram, draw a better picture. And now we have a better picture. So, so let's remember we have 2a is b plus c. Now when we put these perpendiculars down here, Boom, boom. We get called the, this, what am I going to call this, say, x and y. ax and ay are equal to what? s minus a. s minus a, and that is equal to, we've proved, a over 2, which is equal to, what is that equal to, actually? This is a over 2. Okay on a over 2, is, which is equal to b plus c over 4. But the point is now, am is equal to c over 2. an is equal to b over 2. If b over 2 is bigger than c over 2, then b over 2 is bigger than their arithmetic mean, which is b plus c over 4, and c over 2 is smaller than their, their arithmetic mean. Right? That's what this is. And now, what do we have? So we have b over 2. So that gives us sort of the ordering of like what comes where. So this is c over 2. This thing right here is b plus c over 4, which makes this and this equal to what? So ax needs to be b plus c over 4. So this is we need to have c over 4, and we have, we need to have b over 4. And then from c over 2, when we add this to c over 2, we need to get c over 4. So this is b minus c over 4. And this is also, in a similar reasoning, b, plus, b minus c over 4. Because when we add them together, we need to get b over 2. This plus this needs to be b over 2. So this is b minus c over 4, b minus c over 4. And now what do we do? Well, we say we have this, this, this is equal to this. We can say because we have a 90 degree angle, we have uh, side angle side similarity, uh, side angle side congruency. And from there it follows that I m is equal to I n. Or we can say I m squared is equal to m x squared plus x i squared. And then m x squared is equal to yn squared plus xi squared, which is equal to, then we say xi is iy, yn squared plus yi squared, which is equal to in squared, and so im is equal to in. And then by our lemma that we've proved beforehand in our problems, we have this im is equal to in. And we could even like go ahead and try to prove it. We would say, okay, remember this, I am is I n, and now we prove our lemma. We'd say lemma one. Actually, how, how could we prove this in the quickest way possible? Or will we even need to prove it now? Actually, yes, we would sort of need to go ahead and prove this. I'm just thinking, I'm looking at whether or not there's a way to get out of needing to prove it. And there is a way of getting out of needing to prove it. And we could actually now use the fact that these are so we could actually write, instead of this, we could write the, the congruency. And from the congruency, it follows that the angle mix is equal to the angle niy. And we also know that the angle xiy is equal to 180 minus half, because it's 1990. And this is something that's like a common sort of like a mental model to have in geometry. You have these four lie on the circle you need these four to lie on the circle, so you need this angle to equal this one. And that's basically what I saw here. That is the mental model that I have that I recognized in this problem. So here now we have, because this is equal to this, then we would say the angle M I N is equal to the angle X I Y, 
minus the angle xim plus the angle yin. And given these two are equal, this is the angle xiy, but the angle and the angle xiy is equal to 180 minus alpha. And so it follows that min is 180 minus alpha. And so min plus man is equal to 180, which means what? These four points are concyclic, which is what we need to prove. And I want to show you this problem because it's a cool way. It's this condition, which is kind of wacky, but it's a cool way to solve a problem in two ways when you have some sort of a length condition, which you have here. The question is, how am I going to use it? One way is to go about saying, oh, trigonometry, and then just brrr, go the trigonometric way. And the other way is saying, okay, let me see what I need to prove. I need I to be on here, okay. And then, oh, I know a lemma. And now because I know this lemma, which is something common, or you can also just ask yourself, if I had, I was on here, or going at it backwards, if I was on here, what would I have? I would have I am, I am and I am are equal. And then you pause, you ask yourself, does I am equal I am imply that they're concyclic? If it's here? And then you see, oh, actually it does. And one of the ways we can actually prove it does is by adding these two perpendiculars. That's a different proof of the same lemma that we had. And that finishes up our problem here. I think it's a cool problem. And I hope you learned something from this problem because there's these two ways we could have gone about it. And as always, thanks for problem solving.